dicky with that. But I do want to highlight the fact that Gambit trained towards that Orianna, so we may see that for Alex. Over yeah. the other side, Crystal Ball working well, Tristana locked in. We are going to see Zuna on his comfort champion. So I like what both these teams have now done because we've gotten Gambit into a control composition, which really I think is their strength. They're a very well coordinated team. Aside from the support roster changing twice, this group has been together for almost two solid years now. It was the beginning of 2012 they started blowing up onto the scene. And, and there we go, there's the Ari coming in. So they've got a very well-controlled composition here, as well as the ability for playmaking from Alex, which is important. It, it highlights the two major strengths, is team fighting for Gambit and Alex going crazy, so I like that a lot. And to wrap up the composition, we see Psycho said locking in that Singe. So going to try and channel his inner Looper. Looper's been obviously doing very well with Singe this tournament. Mm -hmm. We'll see how well Sid can do it in this game. I imagine he'll do well. Sid's a very strong player. He's very adaptable and actually has one of the, uh, I would say, wider champion pools in North America. Plays differing styles of champions, more so than other top laners. Um, and also to round out the rest of their picks, of course, you've got the playmaker for Mancloud as well, which I think is mandatory for Vulcan. And at the same time, you've got Zuna on the Tristana. Uh, I'll, some of the pros actually criticize Zuna's positioning in team fights and overall and giving him a move block that resets on killer assist as well as the pushback from the ultimate will allow him to sit there and auto attack for a full team fight and that's really good. Yeah, especially if the game does go later and later with the immense range that Tristana gets into her favor, we'll play. I also feel like uh, Vulcan have quite a single target pick focus in mind. So guys, while we're waiting for the game to load up, let's quickly take a look at who the fans have picked to win this match. And according to lolesports.com, a massive 81% of you guys think wow. that Gambit will lock down at least that tie for second place and actually send Vulcan home pack. And of course, the analyst chose them as well, so no... No move in the standings, I think, at all. T today or even yesterday, if I recall correctly. Everyone's now on the same page. I think you guys at home are just cheating and making sure that you keep research. that plus two victory. It's research. It's uh, we've had this discussion. Yeah, you're right. Week. Sorry. <laughs> it's research. Informed research. While we've got a second to actually uh, uh, highlight some of the mechanics here, if Gambit do win, and mm -hmm. if Ozone win against Maneski, what it does is it puts them in a tie for second place, and because their head-to-head -head is one-to-one, -one, Gambit and Ozone would play a rematch. Yes, and they would play that right after the Ozone-Maneski game, so we would see that within about two hours. And the, of course, the other case is if Vulcan wins, then they still need help. Maneski must win for a three-way tie, and if there's a three-way tie, that actually is played tomorrow. And if we are going to be quite realistic about this one, if Vulcan win and Ozone beat Maneski, it means Gambit goes home, and your first and second seeded teams from this group will be Fnatic and Ozone. But that is many games ahead right now. Gambit and Vulcan on the rift, hanging out in this mid lane. Gambit a little more, t uh, more stacked up, as it were. But I'm not expecting any shenanigans, as you can see Genja miles and miles away, starting with that Doran shield, which he's been doing several times this event. Yeah, it's interesting because he's not even against that heavy of a harass lane, but because he has no sustain from his teammate Yordle, it helps him make sure he can survive the laning phase. But as we talked about the sort of level one arrangements of these teams, when you've got a, a line fully spread out, this is sometimes considered a defensive opening, but it also guarantees you know where your opposing team wards, where they ran in to go spot things, and of course as no one plows through the enemy lineup, both these teams now know there's no deep wards, their junglers are actually hidden, and with the Lee Sin, Lee Sin being crazy strong early game junglers, no one's going to see them coming, basically. Well, we'll have to see if that lack of sight will pay in favor of either team because any early kills onto basically any of these champions could significantly infect, uh, uh, impact rather yeah. that mid-game phase. Genjin Voidal playing defensive duty on this bottom lane. It does look like Vulcan are going to initiate the, the lane swap as they've thrown Zuna and Bloodwater up top to deal with Darian Shen. And just interesting to point out, Flash Ignite on Shen, Ghost Teleport there for Singed. Those are pretty standard pickups right there. Even with the Ignite, Shen has really low kill potential. Uh, but the early first, like, four levels, if Diamond comes to gank for Darien, they can pick this down. Of course, here comes the invade for this buff, and it's a two-on-two! -two. That's a massive amount of damage onto Diamond Prox. We see Zuna, he manages to rocket jump forward. Flash already burned from Diamond. An initial advantage to Vulcan, they forced him away. Now Voidal and Genja trying to play the same tactic, but Xmithy is going to be able to get away with the buff and do pretty well there. Vulcan played that one a lot better. They showed up in time and dealt the damage before Diamond had dealt enough to the Golem. Whereas on the other side, it was just a quick smite for Smithy and he was safe. And that's the risk when you go for a buff with your top laner, is you can get 2v2 there and lose the battle. It's just a matter of getting there in time. And as we saw, Vulcan got there first. Well, Smithy's now going to try to steal away a buff here. This would be his second blue buff, refreshing that time. And more importantly, denying it from Diamond Prox. 
There is simply no members of Gambit here to defend or challenge this one. And it does look like Smithy's going to secure this one. So early advantage to Vulcan. And that's a very good level one strat, as it were, coming out of the North American squad. Very well played there. Smithy, though, just halfway through level two right now, had to share the experience when he took the blue buff down, which, to be fair, does help Psycho Sid. As of, of course, Psycho Sid actually uh, as well got to level up off of uh, some race. So, gotta say, pretty nice early start here for Vulcan overall. There's a lot of things going their way. So, what we do see, Psycho Sid's gonna use that teleport, regen his HP in that, the fountain, and he's back in time for basically two full waves of minions right He's not going to be able to see us quite as effectively with the Varus and Zara and no minions, but he will at least get stay in experience. He sees Diamond. Here yeah, comes Diamond from the side. A very good ward is going to allow Sid to at least get out. Diamond Prox just going to apply some harass, and there's a lot of damage going to this tower very early on. But compare the location of where Diamond came in behind Psycho Sid to where Smithy showed up. That wave is just now dying, but Alex getting jumped on by Man Cloud. Now Man Cloud continues to deal the damage. Alex forced to flash over the wall. Man Cloud decides not to chase, but flash burned. No escape mechanism there for Alex as both of the dual lanes plus uh, junglers is hammering away on their solo lane towers. But look what Darian's going for. He knows he's zoned out of this lane, so he's coming to a different lane to make a play on Man Cloud. We see how this works out for him. Darian's hanging out in the river. We can see Xmithy fairly close by, actually, killing off the wolf camp of Gambit. The first tower to fall will be Vulcan, so Gambit with an initial global objective lead, but Vulcan and Bloodwater are not far behind securing that top lane tower. Here's the chance. There is Flash still available for Mancloud. Wait, do you see the taunt does land? Charm pulls Mancloud backwards. Ignite is ticking. He decides to try jump onto Alex. Safeguard comes in from Smithy, and that's going to force Darian and Alex away. Very good timing from Xmithy and golf claps all around from the audiences. They survived the gank. That was a great play. And of course, Gambit has the numbers advantage on the bottom as well. They're taking a very early dragon out as of this. That's something that Gambit does incredibly well. Four and a half minutes. Psycho Sid has used that ghost. We see a flash away from Voidal. They fling Diamond Prox out. Smite is going to be enough to secure the dragon. The question is how many kills can Vulcan Oof. secure? Diamond Prox is probably going to throw down this rappel just to survive a little bit longer. He's going to flash. Pull the people back and Darian gets out. First blood is secured. We do see Alex oh. going to follow suit with the aid of Bloodwater Vulcan. Two kills to the Dragon and Tower of Gambits. That's a great move there by Vulcan to realize what was going on there, show up into that battle. And Sid, of course, when you, when you fight a Dragon that low, that's the risk of a Dragon at that low of level, is you don't do a lot of damage, and Dragon deals a pretty good amount. So Sid walking into three enemy champions normally is suicide. But that was a great play here. So Vulcan equalized that one out. You can see a uh, 700 gold lead actually for Vulcan due to their superior laning uh, right now. And this is the early game lead that is important for Vulcan because they don't do much without it. Yeah, this is something that we keep highlighting. It's something that, you know, Vulcan did earlier today against Ozone. They got an early advantage and it was their team fights that cost them. Gambit will be looking to try to replicate some of that team fight chaos and hoping that some single target focus or maybe better communication can work in their favor because as it stands, Vulcan do have a couple hundred gold lead and a significant amount of CS between Psycho Sid and Darian. Yeah, and so basically what Vulc uh, Gambit are going to try to do to pull this one back is definitely playmake. It is Ooh. the fact that, oh my gosh, that damage Darian is dangerously low. Uh, he's alive. So it's on Alex Itch to hit level 6 and go be useful and roam around the map and pick off kills. It's on Darian to hit level 6 and have Stand United. And it's on Diamond to be the amazing jungler he is and also help make those plays. Vulcan have a very good siege composition and extremely good late game scaling. Gambit probably should not let it get to that. Well, we'll see how well Gambit can contain Mancloud. Remember, they allowed Zed to go through. It was first pick Shen over first pick Zed. Mancloud snatched that up the moment he got his chance. 500 gold in the lead of Vulcan right now. And CS advantage basically in every single lane. 30 creeps for Psycho Sid to the 9 of Darian Shen. And he's picked himself up a chain vest. So it's going to help against 3 of the 4 Vulcan members. But if he uh, gets caught up by Psycho Sid, there's going to be a lot of damage that can't be mitigated. Yeah, this is going to be really interesting as these tanks scale up. Because you're right that... With Sid being so far ahead, even though he got zoned out from his turret very early on, as that turret went down, he's just gotten more time to run around because of that dragon fight is basically what had happened. Because members were off the map and no longer able to put pressure on that isolated Singe, he got time to get levels, he got time to get gold, and now Sid can pretty much do whatever he wants. Because of, because of Catalyst, he's able to run into a 1v2 or run into any of the 1v1s and keep being this annoying Singe with teleport up soon and make plays. Well, we'll see if we can continue to control the map, because that's really what's going to come down to. Mancloud is level 6 now, does have that death mark available. There's no one to 
oppose him in that top lane. He's just trying to CS as best as possible. We see Darian has returned to this bottom lane. A moment or two ago, it was in Genja, in fact, that was trying to fend off Psycho Sid. See a little bit of poke going down. Darian taunts himself out of danger. Gambit just trying to reset. You can see Voidal. He's hanging around his own red buff area. Genja's making his way towards that uh, top lane. And with the blue buff respawning, you see Xmithy invading. Yeah, but he's outnumbered right here. This is not the easiest thing for Smithy right here. This should be able to go to Gambit. So Gambit have got the numbers advantage. However, here comes Mancloud with his ultimate. There's no crescendo available for, for Bloodwater. Keep that in mind. Blue buff was actually secured there by Alex. So a little bit close, a little bit scary. But Gambit get out cleanly. They don't lose the buff. Mancloud was a quarter second off from stealing that with a shuriken. He's, of course, looking to flank around the mid lane, but Voidal sniffs that one out. Of course, there's ward coverage here for Gambit. This turret type shouldn't mean much. Oh, well, there's still a large number of Vulcan members in that mid lane. They definitely set their sights on that tower. You can see them now splitting up, moving away as they really didn't have the minions to challenge that tower down. 700 gold in the lead. Xmithy continues to have some very good vision control. Look at the amount of Vulcan wards on the minimap. Yeah. Psycho Sid, he decides to cut this lane, farming between two towers. And that's exactly what these guys want now, because Vulcan are the team in control, and Singe can free farm this forever and guarantee himself a lot of gold income. And as long as you have ward coverage, you're not going to be that afraid of this, like, not really a gank by Gambit. So, Voidal's just coming to help out. Darian is going to at least lock Psycho Sid for a couple of seconds. The Root does connect as well. Cocoon not in range just yet. Safeguard does come down. Psycho Sid is going to get hooked up, but there's no Ignite ticking, so he's going to be able to use Insanity Potion to survive. Now in the mid lane, Mancloud jumps onto Alex. Deathmark pops. Zuna, in fact, lands the kill, most likely from that explosive shot. And 3-0, yeah. Vulcan in a good position to take yet another tower. The crescendo actually helped us set that one up as well, and that's kind of what happens when you get that much ward control. That's what you do with the Singe, is you bait everyone to run around and chase you, and it overextends the rest of your team. It allowed Gambit to rush in, flash crescendo Alex Itch, and chase the kill down. Now, stayed without Ghost or Ult, it's going to be a bit harder for him to do that but it's going to be the same thing over and over. Be annoying as Singed and make play. So watch this. The Crescendo comes out. Alex Hitch is going to take so much damage. And look at the engage by Mancloud. The ulti actually tracked Alex Itch through a dash, which allowed him to get a bit more damage across. Very good play. Well, always got to remember, when you give away that Zed, you have to imagine that your opponent will be picking it up. And Mancloud making good use of it. He's got a 10 CS advantage. One kill, one assist to the 0-2-0 zero, zero Alex Itch. And Vulcan, even with three kills and an additional tower, they're only about 1,500 gold ahead. So we'll have to see how uh, rapidly that lead can continue to grow if they keep making these plays. And I want to know how uh, aware of the map Gambit is right now, because in 14 seconds, Dragon has respawned. Vulcan have already sent Sid top lane with teleport, so they've already set up their lanes for a Dragon attempt. Darian, though, is unaware. Well, red buff is up. You see Smithy at least lands the Tempest, but Darian got away thanks to that Shadow Dash really kill potential just yet. It's a fairly tanky Darien. So like I said, he's now going to get some damage down onto Genja. Doran's Blade and Doran's Shield not really going to offer a lot of damage to that Singe. Vulcan are going to start off the Dragon. But they're completely outnumbered. It has to be a steal from Diamond and that's it. Well, we'll see if he can make it work. Diamond Prox forced backwards. Roots not going to be able to do anything. Even with the Cocoon, Vulcan secure their first Dragon of the game. Psycho Sid continues to be a menace. and This is something that you always see good Singes doing. Just completely controlling the map, and once Singe gets ahead, it's very, very difficult to reel him back in. Well, we just saw Vulcan fall victim to that, actually, when Looper kind of just tooled them around the map and in team fights here. And and you look at what happened right there with the Dragon attempt. Is Gambit, with the other four members of their team, were like, yeah, we can kind of try to contest Dragon and throw skills at you. The fact that it even tried, instead of pushing or, or pressuring another lane, says they weren't completely ready for that, because they didn't capitalize on the fact that all of Vulcan was down on the bottom side of that. They just said, yeah, Genja, go farm a little bit. That'll do something. I imagine Genja had a lot to say in that regard. It's something that he does fairly often. Still trying to work his way towards some different items. Decided not to pick up a Phage as his first big item back. BF Sword in Genja's back pocket, but you're comparing that to a Blade of the Ruined King, Tristana. There is a significant amount of disparity between these two uh, AD carries because Zuna's just going to have a lot more killing and kiting potential in these team fights. It's the interesting build. With the Blade of the Ruin King nerfed recently, a lot of guys have stopped running Blade of the Ruin King Tristana. But basically, this shores up the 
the mid-game power deficit we normally talk about with Tristana's, where you've got early ability power damage and you can kind of build your lane out. And then when you have like two or three items, you're pretty good again. You can rely on your range as you level up. But at this point, you're usually pretty frail with the Ruin King active and the base damage on it. It's actually pretty decent for Trist here, so this actually holds over what would have been a weakness for Vulcan. Well, we'll see how well it works out in the team fights. As Saigosin and Darien are just trading a little bit of poke, a little bit of damage back and forth. Darien is 30 CS behind 35 at this point, actually, a level down. He's at least, he's at least holding up. It was a bit of poke. Saigosin did take a tower hit, which obviously is going to help uh, Darien's cause. Now, Vulcan getting ready for this next blue buff spawn. It will be in the next couple of minutes, hence the ring of vision wards or sight wards being set up. Yep. Card, Annex Smithy now trying to apply some Concerted focus onto this tower, and Alex takes a massive amount of poke. Yeah, he is. And honestly, Vulcan are doing a very good job of being controlled in this game. You mentioned the Ring of Vision Wards that are out here. They have three around the Dragon area, and another three around the Blue Buff and Baron area. There is no vision allowed for Gambit. The buffs are starting to get stolen time and time and time again. Psycho is able to roam around whatever he wants, cut behind a lane, fight Darien whatever he wants. He knows there's no threats here. Vulcan are just in control right now. Yeah, doing very, very well. Psycho said once again, popping that insanity potion. Just going to heal himself up. Here comes Zuna. We do see the ghost coming down from Psycho Sid. He's getting in range, tanking up the tower, flings Darien backwards. Buster shot throws him against the wall with the poison ticks. Couple more auto attacks. Psycho Sid and Zuna make that look easy. They did. And that's, again, no wards spotting them coming down. Just a well played fight, of course, as well. The goo, the fling, even the Ruin King active helping to guarantee. Just a well played fight. Man close. Where's the run, though? Ignites his pop. We do see Spur Rush coming in. Alex is going to try and track him. Yeah, Deathmark has just been used a moment ago. Spur Rush, one last proc. Man oh. does get taken down with the last bit of damage there. They trade one for one. We do see a tower falling in the bottom lane as Zuna and Psycho Sid extended to three towers. Now, Diamond. Picking a fight with Zunan, this is a fight he's going to lose if he sticks around. He's decided to back out cleanly. Yeah, it's just a fight where he's not really going to win. Even though the Rune King active is on cooldown, Zuna is able to lifesteal between the harass attempts from Diamond, get his health back up. There's no way in for the, uh, the Russian jungler, so nothing there. And we're back to the control game. Now, for what it's worth, those wards have now all timed out for Vulcan. Vulcan has to reinvest in that ward control game. And keep in mind, those vision wards cost 125 gold. Those six cost them 750. You look at the gold lead, it's not that massive. If Vulcan don't capitalize more off of all those expenditures, they will fall behind. Well, we'll have to see if uh, Vulcan do continue that vision control because it has been very, very good this matchup. It's in a number of pink wards in the pockets of Gambit for the last couple of minutes, but they haven't necessarily deterred the amount of vision from the Vulcan squad. Now, with that extra kill on the board, Alex Hitch does have his uh, Sorkster shoes completed as well as the Arm Guard and that Fiendish Code. He's going to be trying to work towards either the Hourglass to cancel man, man Cloud or the best defense of a good offense and going for a Death by Grasp. We'll see what he does to, uh, decide towards, both of which needing a needless large rod as his next component. Yeah, my guess is actually going to be the Death by Grasp. Alex got the Seeker's Arm Guard very, very early on as, okay, I need armor to survive my lane, but otherwise I'm going to go for my build. Because then from there, he went for the Codex. From there, I believe he's going to go for some more damage output. Well, we'll see if he has to make adaptations because as we just saw, he did basically trade in a duel against Mancloud. That option is still here just to fight for Alex Itch. Yeah, we'll have to see if he can make it more than that right now. Charm does catch on to Zuna. Good damage from that Orb of Deception. Spirit Rush is available for Alex, but without his Ignite, Maybe playing it a little bit safer. You can see the rest of uh, Gambit roaming around to the river. Cocoon does catch Bloodwater out. Here comes Darien. Stand United is being channeled. A very good Dragon's Rage kick. Shen does not get delivered. Those are flashes away. A great crescendo. Locks up three members in the background. We do see Mancloud diving onto Voidal. He's going to get knocked up into the air. Darien is now in a little bit of trouble. They're going to trade support for support as Bloodwater does get dropped. But Zuna is able to pick one up. He stomps down onto Darien. Goomba stomping in with the slow. Darien is now in a massive amount of trouble. Genja, Nowhere to be seen, not involved in this fight. Psycho City is going to try continue chasing oh. on the side, and Man Cloud with a shuriken does pick up the kill, and that ends up being a three for one exchange. That Gambit started. That Gambit did start that fight. It was a great kick back by Smithy to make sure that Shen was not on top of his important carries. Bloodwater actually got a beautiful crescendo onto three, and even at the end there, Smithy peeled off from the chase to try to stop Alex Ditch's recall to get his team another kill. Didn't quite get there in time. But with people still dead here and no scene united, this is a Vulcan controlled dragon, so they are rewarded from that fight with a dragon here. Playoff Hope's actually still alive for Vulcan. And what this uh, reminds me of is the very first time Gammon and Vulcan played, however, the roles were reversed. 
I recall Gambit starting off Dragonfight, being in the river. Vulcan initiating fights that they shouldn't have initiated, and it backfired. Gambit did exactly the same thing in that situation. They're now 4,000, 5,000 gold behind. And just to touch on what uh, Freak was saying, if Vulcan win here, and if Mineski win, it'll be a three-way tie per second. However, if Vulcan win and Ozone win, it means that neither Vulcan nor Gambit will make it into those quarterfinals. So even more pressure on both uh, Ozone and Mineski in the very next game. Let's see where this ends up panning out. Of course, we've seen miraculous comebacks as well. We can't discount the fact that you never know with Gambit. They're so experienced, you just you have to think there's the option they find something special here. So, at the beginning of the game, we talked about the Genja build. The Bloodthirster's there. He didn't rush Phage. Maybe he decided it wasn't worth it. Maybe he's got other plans. We'll keep track of that as it goes through. But, of course, you, you keep looking down at the items. The Zuna Power Spike is coming very soon. He's getting closer and closer to Infinity Edge. Of course, that Blade of the Rune King done a while ago. There's a lot that's stacked against Gambit. So Diamond Prox once again starting a fight. He's jumped on top of Xmithy. Here comes Alex from the side. Spirit Rush has been used. The Charm does not connect. Second proc of Spirit Rush goes out the back. Mancloud with his death mark has been able to completely remove Voidal from the map. Now Diamond Prox is in trouble. Genja is finally in a team fight, but he's alone. We do see a great kickback. Genja gets taken out as Mancloud goes for the double kill. And Vulcan turn tail. They might even be considering a Baron right now. They do have a numbers advantage. Instead, they're probably going to roll onto this blue buff. This is a very risky Baron, though, because their health bars are fairly low, even with the Blade of the Ruin Kings. Alex. And actually, he will know that people were there because he would have gotten stacks on his passive from the Q, even without vision. So they know not to run for this. Uh, Genja was caught out. Now Vulcan have started off this risky Baron. They have four members on there with Psycho Sid. Gonna run a little bit of inter interference. It's Smithy is gonna have to try and dance some of this damage. Mancloud is dropping low. There is a smite available for Diamond Prox if he decides to go in. Baron is at three and a half thousand HP. It's at three thousand HP. Diamond needs to go to Spider Form to repel in. Baron gets stopped. Crescendo does actually catch him. I think he repels in. Baron still alive in the background. It's hammering onto Vulcan. Stranglethorn throws him up in the air. Baron secures one, Alex secures a second. That's a second kill now for Alex. And, and they can go for low. Baron! Here comes Darian. Oh, He's it's going to be uh, standing lighting in. <laughs> that Baron is so incredibly uh, dealing so much damage as Mancloud is hanging around the side. He manages to use the shadow out. Alex is in a lot of trouble, but they may. This is risky. This is incredibly risky. Can you believe it? So, two members of Vulcan alive. Bloodwater is out of mana. His recall's canceled. Genja's going for this fight. The barrier is up. We'll see if it blocks some of that damage. He's going to try and lie still a little bit off the ward. Baron continues being focused. Alex gets the shutdown kill onto Mancloud. Baron is going to serious? be secured. Ladies and gentlemen, Gambit turned this game around. They are 2,000 gold behind, but with the stats of Baron, this is an even game. I can't believe this just happened. At the beginning of the game, it was, you guys tried Dragon really early, and Sid managed to punch with a couple of kills and some map control. And then Vulcan tried Baron really early, and they got punished. Alex Itch putting out enough damage there. All right, I just got to, like, stop and think about this, because there's a lot now to think about in this game. That was a massive misplay from Vulcan. The Baron was a risky decision. You highlighted it before going into the pit, and Gambit able to just Dance around Vulcan, the repel so impactful from Diamond Prox. Now, all five members of Gambit with Baron on their backs. The item advantage, the HP advantage. We'll see what they do with it because they are still two towers down and they're still 2,000 gold behind. They've stacked up in this mid lane, they want the mid tower. And they've got the people there first. Sid to the very, very bottom lane, spins up at the top. This will be a turret going down to equalize the gold a little bit more. Vulcan is still not collapsing back for this fight. Teleport is not available for Sid for another 10 or so. will be up shortly. Gambit continue to focus this tower. Four members bashing away as Voidal hanging out in the background, putting some vision down. Xmithy does get taunted up. No root lands. The charm connects. That is him deleted from the fight. Massive damage from the piercing arrows as Genja continues to spam down. Alex jumps in. He just melts blood water. And now Gambit onto the inhibitor turret. Sid's teleporting back to join the fight. He's got to defend this inhibitor. This is a massive, massive defense here for Vulcan. They flung Darren in the background, but he's their tankiest member. He's just going to taunt out the background. Deathmark is available as we see Psycho Sid gets taunted in. Darian the focus of the Deathmark. That's going to pop. We'll see if he survives. Darian survives. That's Deathmark did nothing for Vulcan. Oh! The rest of Gambit now focusing the tower. A snipe from the background. And all of a sudden, Genja and Gambit take the gold lead. Ah, uh, this all just happened. All right, and here's another attempt. No, they don't catch Zuna. So, Sniper Genja right there making a lot happen. Chunk Bloodwater to help guarantee the Baron a little while ago. Had some really good team fighting here. And Vulcan, it, it happened they lost to Ozone. It's 
uncoordinated fighting right here. I think their their defensive Baron, I think it was called well to kind of go back a little while. Psycho Sid tried to buy time. Try to zone out Alex H did a good job of that. The Crescendo had barely missed Diamond, and so the team stopped hitting Baron and said, let's kill Diamond first, then go for it. But Gambit tooled them around in that fight too much. But then this battle was horribly uncoordinated. Pick after pick after pick, one at a time. People saying, I can get a kill and get out. Nope, it didn't work. I can get a kill and get out. Nope, it didn't work. I tell you what, when you're focusing your ultimates and your damage into Darien, you're gonna have a bad time. Tonkin right now need to get on the carries. They need to deal damage to the people in Gambit that are threats right now. Baron is slowly wearing off. It's down to about a minute left on the clock, and we see a repeat of this potential river fight. This should be decent, though, for Vulcan. Their major cooldowns are coming up in about just, just a very, very few seconds. The problem is, though, this Alex Itch split push, he's actually now hard to deal with 1v1! Oh, he lands the charm! He manages to dive back with Zuna. It's gonna knock him back. The Ignite secures the kill. That was a point-blank charm. Is now all of a sudden, Alex Itch is off to the side. There's no AD carry for Vulcan if Gambit stick on the tower. Uh, they've got to wait for the wave right here, but they have a 5v4 with no AD carry. None of their... I mean, they... The, the, the ultimates they need for the team fight are available, but they can also make the safe play and just go for Dragon here and get farther ahead in gold. It does look like that is the decision. Mancloud now thinking about jumping onto Diamond Brox, decides to just clear out that wolf camp after Diamond secures the big wolf. Now, second draw, second Dragon of the game for Gambit. Remember, they had a four and a half minute Dragon. This is definitely a heavy Dragon control from both of these teams. And once again, Gambit, 1,500 gold in the lead. Diamond almost connecting with that cocoon. Okay, so right now Vulcan needs to just calm down for a little bit and realize they have a Tristana on their lineup and the Baron buff has just timed out. Playing a full-on defense game and letting Singed, Zed, and Tristana go infinite is a good fallback plan for Vulcan. They just have to defend right here. Well, we'll see if they can. You can see that the recalls are coming in. Sid is back in base, but it's late as Mancloud finally returns. Home Guard boots are available. The rest of Gambit hammering away on the inhibitor. Now, Insanity Potion is not available for Sid, so that burst of speed that it gives him on an initiation potential is not there. Flash Crescendo not available either for Vulcan, so this is going to be a hard-pressed uh, defense, but remember, there's no Baron. There is no Baron buff, but here we go. Gambit in the front, Darien tanking very, very well. Look at Genja. He is so safely positioned that no one can get on him easily. Fight starts, Psycho Sid down a half. That's a lot of damage. I think that was the DFG thrown onto Psycho Sid. Alex saving his Spirit Rush right now. They've chunked down the main tank to 50%, and they're burning out the timer on that Insanity Potion. So Gambit, happy with the damage they've done to the Inhibitor, not feeling comfortable sticking around, back out cleanly. Baron's going to respawn in two minutes, and with the way these teams are playing, it may actually be our next team fight. And it's worth pointing out that the, the texture of the map has changed a little bit. Just a minute and a half ago, Zuna finished Infinity Edge, which is an incredibly important power spike now, because even though there's a Sunfire Cape, a Spirit of the Ancient Golem, Zuna will be able to chunk down the front line of Gambit. It's something that, that the Russians need to be concerned about. The push coming in too quickly for Vulcan. They should get this turret, but it's gonna be close if they don't run soon. Yeah, Gambit nowhere near, but look at the chain of corruption. Psycho Sid is the first target. We see Mancloud and Bloodwood knocked into the air as the Crescendo does stun them up for a second, but not gonna be enough. Genja should just get popped by this death mark. They trade mid laner for AD carry, but now the rest of Gambit are on the hunt. Spirit Rush was used. Stanji Knights will be available soon, so expect Darren to split push before the next fight. That's going to be an easy option, though, but remember that Psycho Sid will also have his teleport up, and as we've seen time and again, Sid's really built for that fight against Darren. He's built early magic with this. He went Mercury Treads as well. He even went for the, uh, I forget the name of it, Distortion Boots that lower the cooldown of your teleport and ghost. So for the rest of this game, Sid will actually be able to match Darien and is stronger in the 1v1. That is an advantage for Vulcan. We just saw Alex Itch one, uh, just completely solo Zuna, and we saw Mancloud solo Genja. Both these AD carries can get deleted. There's a lot of variables to account for that the gold lead won't tell you in these fights. It's actually how the fights are played out that means a lot in this game. Whoever is able to focus down the damage after Bursting a single target down. Ari and Zed both so incredibly good at doing that. We see a Void Staff has just been completed there for Alexic in conjunction with his DFG and his Zonya's Hourglass. Over on the other side, Mancloud with his Last Whisper, Brutalizer, and Blade of the Rune King. No standard items, but we do see a Warmogs in the back pocket there for Darren. It's something that we, we don't see all too often. It has sort of fallen out of favor a little bit. 
Yeah. Genji, of course, working towards an IE of his own. It's interesting that he went for Warmogs because you can build Red and Zoman against this Vulcan lineup. You're mostly concerned with Zed and Tristana, especially Tristana, to be honest here, who's already got percent health damage, so adding armor and an attack speed slow is nice. But Darien's, uh, I mean, Shen in general scales off of health. The Key Strike and the Vorpal Strike heal actually scale off of max health, so he's actually getting some some teammate or offensive scaling through his choice of Warmogs. Well, it was just that little tidbit of information that popped up. Two games on Ari for Alexic, two victories. And as an aside, he's only got a 15 KDA on that champion, <laughs> keeping not quite as high in this game, 7, 3, and 3, but definitely the lead in kills for Gamba. 10 out of the 11 kills Alexic has been involved in, and he secured seven of them. So he really needs to pick off a high priority target in these team fights. You see Gambit and Vulcan trying to find opportunities to battle as both of their solo laners continue the, the split push game and relying on their global presence to join a fight when it does occur. But what I'm concerned about with these two split push top laners is their difference in builds because Darien's works. He's going to be tanky regardless of the fact that he went Warmogs versus Branduin, whereas Psycho Sid is building like full magic resist. He is so worried about Darien, Diamond, and Alex that he's not built to survive Genja if Genja gets time to shoot that Shen over and over. It's a concern that might just fight Psycho Sid in the end. Well, we'll have to see if it does. As it stands, 29 minutes on the clock. We're getting closer to the time frame when both of these teams have actually been wrapping up their games over the course of the World's Tournament right now. Once again, Sid and uh, Darian, they're actually swapping sides. They're basically just, it's almost a gentleman's agreement. We'll see them trading back and forth, continuing to farm. Now, Baron is up. You can see Vision being denied. Mancloud may eat a charm. This is going to be scary. We flicked over to fight a Baron. We do see the charm landing. Alexic spur rushes out. That should be Mancloud going down. As the Stantonite comes in, that's going to be enough to survive the death mark damage. Alexic still surviving in the background. Sid and Smithy taunted up by Darren. As now the Strangle Force will only throw up Sid. But that is great. You cannot, if you lock up Sins, you can kill him. Two kills for Gambit, and now they turn their sights onto Baron. And there were a number of outplays there. We actually missed an attempt in the in the Baron pit by Vulcan. They jumped on the Void as he was sweeping out a ward, but D Diamond showed up to defend him as well. You saw Alexic win the duel in the mid lane. This gives Gambit control over the base. They'll be able to take the inhibitor down, and they've still got another 15 free seconds. They don't have to risk for Baron. They could take the safe Dragon but it's probably going to be okay for them no matter what Gambit chooses. Well, Zuna's deciding to try and play this split push game. There's a line of minions on this bottom wave. We'll see him most likely clear that out and try to get some damage onto the tower. While he's doing so, avoid the idea of stealing one of those double golems as well. The rest of Gambit still stuck mostly around the top half of the map, and Zuna, if he gets enough uncontested time, may be able to get the tower down. This is really smart. This is the Vulcan that I've been waiting to see throughout this tournament is the Zuna split push because in 1v1s, he does very well. He's mechanically very proficient. And on a champion like Tristana, he pushes quickly and gets away very well. And because Tris can kill a base so fast, Gambit doesn't get to Baron without trading out an inhibitor, without some very serious outplay against their opponents. The Zuna split push is actually a very important mark here for Vulcan. Well, we managed to secure the fifth tower of the game for Vulcan, keeping them within touching distance of the goal. That's 2,000 difference. There's a ring of wards sitting all the way up that north part of the river for Vulcan towards the Baron Pits and the rest of Gambit. They're sort of trending upwards while Vulcan are going to take the safe dragon. This is a risk here for Vulcan. They've got to get back to the Baron Pit soon because Gambit gave up going for Dragon entirely. They give up even pushing more turrets down. Let Zuna kind of rest map control, but it let Gambit say, we've got ward coverage over Baron. Our play, look, you got 1,000 gold, you got another 750 from a turret. Our play is for this Baron setup. We can fight you at this and win. Well, we do you see a cocoon catching out onto Psycho Sid. The taunt doesn't land, nor does the charm. DFG is still available for Alexic, but I think that was the first proc of the Spirit Rush. We'll see if he continues to throwing that out. A little uh, bush, death bush, not working out for Gambit. And now Vulcan, they think they've got positioning on this mid inner turret. They're challenging down. There's a number of important cooldowns down here for Gambit. This is actually a pretty good play for Vulcan with the Sinjal still up. Well, we'll see once it does get popped. In the background, Cocoon catches out Psycho Sidic. Smithy only managing to catch that Sonic Wave on one of the little spiderlings. Not able to jump onto Diamond Prox. But we do see Vulcan playing a little more passively. They're not rushing the tower. They're not rushing the tower, but they've got momentary map control here. They pushed Gambit back. Problem for them was Vulcan didn't have an Oracle. They couldn't re-sweep Baron control because that's a big play here. Psycho Sid gets caught though. Massive charm into a root. Now Psycho Sid dropped to about 1,400 HP. He was forced backwards. In the background though, Mancloud does have a death mark available as him and Zuna are now backtracking away. Darren is trying to get in range. 
Simon Prox sinks his fangs into a minion to close the gap. Now we'll see, can the taunt land? That is the question. Safeguards to a ward, and it does allow Smithy to get out cleanly, but a red buff is available. So Gambit going to decide what they want to take because basically everything is available to them. Yeah, and Gambit are individually more powerful. So when an Elise walks at you or a Shen walks at you, the Vulcan has to respect those champions. That allows Gambit to split up the Vulcan lineup and then collapse on a target they need. That's why you saw, even though the fight was reasonably close, Gambit really take control of this one. And now it's, it's again, what plays will these guys make? Gambit are the ones in control. Voidal has an Oracles. He can make sure there's no wards and no vision and play the Baron Dance game. And on top of that, Gambit can all jump over walls. They've got flashes or dashes off cooldown. They can bait Baron and start a fight. Well, for anybody that has watched a number of our uh, games here at Worlds, we talked about the Baron Dance in European teams. It's something that they are proficient with. Like ballroom dancing in Europe, and we see that right now. Vulcan deciding they want to play the pick game. Smithy jumps onto Voidal, forces the flash out. They're a little bit split. Psycho Sid is in the bottom lane. The rest of Vulcan toying with going down the mid lane, while the rest of Gambit are stacked towards this Baron pit. Darian's been forced to recall back, though, because the mid lane pressure is too high from Vulcan, but they're setting up a play right here. There's a surround from Gambit. Well, we'll have to see who goes in first. This is the question. Both of these teams are split. We do see uh, Diamond Frost caught in a little bit of trouble. Stand United was being channeled. He repels forward. A kick back, but Darian is in position. The question is, where is the taunt going to land? Psycho Sid is the first focus here of Gambit as a three-man crescendo locks him up. Genja in the background continues laying down the damage as Zuna forced out the fight. Gambit with an easy two kills on the board right now as Diamond Crux is the only one in danger of going down. A root into a taunt kills Mankind and now Gambit Three for zero, and Diamond Prox gets away with his life. And in that fight, both the assassins focused their efforts on a frontline tank, where while Diamond refused to go down, all of Gambit made sure they killed Psycho Sid. And the resulting 5v4, they just outfought Vulcan. And now with this number advantage, this will be an incredibly difficult Baron steal by Vulcan. It's likely to go to Gambit. The question is, can they do what Gambit did? Zuna just gets chunked down. Barry is going to allow him to survive a little bit. 110 HP, flashes the piercing arrow. Alex flashes over the wall. He's going to be able to secure the kill. Smithy force backwards, decides not to go in 1v5. Another kill on the board for Gambit. A second Baron of the game and a convincing, convincing lead. Smithy's in a little bit of trouble now. There He's is spotted. vision here. Darian, Alex, and Voidal are going to try chase him down. He's got decent move speed, but Smithy, with that side stone, he should be able to get out. Diamond Prox, can he land the cocoon? He's going to flash forward a great Dragon's Rage kick. We do see Alex here. That's Spirit Rush forward. Charm doesn't connect and is basically oh, running. Oh, man. That's basically just popping the ex Smithy Leeson. Yeah, he is now 12, 3, and 5. Alex Itch, he's on a playmaker, and man, is that guy making plays. Alex really trying to get on in this game right here. And this game is just a reverse of what happened in the beginning. Vulcan made all the best plays early on. They picked up the straggling kills. They took control of the objectives. But with a couple of good fights, Gambit said no. Gambit took vision control. Gambit are forcing all the issues, picking all the fights, and then winning them. Let's not beat around the bush. It all changed at Baron. It did. This entire game swung at Baron. And Gambit just took the reins and have not given it back. We do see now Darren working towards what I believe to be Arandian's zone and they got himself a giant spell, the Warden's Mel, and another chain vest. Definitely more afraid of the physical damage of Vulcan than he is of Psycho's its magical damage. And when you consider the immense amount of HP that he's got, I think that's very smart itemization. Genji as well, he's got himself that chain vest. I wouldn't be surprised to see that becoming the Guardian Angel, as it is something that we know the Gambit players do like to do very often. It's one of the ways they sort of evolved against teams that have really good late game that defend their turrets well, is let's just build enough defense that we can turret dive you and not get punished for doing so. And honestly, when you're in this game, when you look at Vulcan's wave clear with the Tristana, with the Zed, that's pretty decent actually. And so Gambit, they either get a pick or they just do a very elongated siege or they just straight up dive with defense. Well, we'll see how this works out. Alex throws out the charm, just missing x Smitty on the side there. Darian now going to be in position to tank up not only all of Vulcan, but the tower if needs be. Zuna eats himself a piercing arrow in the background and the tower is secured for Gambit. Vulcan do not contest that at all. Gambit six towers to five, now they'll set their sights on the bottom lane inhibitor turret. And here we go, damage is coming through, of course they still have the Baron buff as well, Gambit. So Vulcan, even with the turret, will have a hard time fighting this. Psycho Sid, the tankiest tank on Vulcan, is just going to get melted under all of the damage. He does survive thanks to the Insanity Potion. Alexich 
caught out thanks to the crescendo. In the background, Bloodwater dropped to 200 HP in a very good Zonia's Hourglass. Allows Alexich to stay alive. Genja has not been attacking the tower just yet. His Smithy is now low. Piercing arrow from the side as Genja plays the marksman that he truly is. Spamming out those Qs. The tower is going to drop in the next couple of seconds. There is no death mark available. Now, Psycho Sid has returned with max HP and the rest of Vulcan trying to set up a fight. I believe that Charm Quartz and Minion not catching any of the champions of Vulcan. And right now, Vulcan have not given up kills, but they've lost the tower. And Gambit are still regenerating, coming back into this fight to continue the inhibitor push. Psycho Sid, 1,500 HP. You see Zuna smashing away with that immense, immense Tristana Rage. Slowed down by the Hail of Arrows. Darren is just waiting for a setup. He gets caught by the Charm. Safeguard's not going to be enough. And Alex with his 13th kill of the game. That's unlucky 13 for Vulcan, as it's going to cost him two inhibitors. And Alex just needs two more assists to make his score leak, which he deserves here. So hopefully his teammates can kill, steal some of them out. Smithy lands a Q though. Vulcan are not done with this. No, they're not. Look at that long range resonating strike. Smithy realizes Lee Syndrome cost him his life. Now Psycho Sid in trouble is another death mark was used there by Man Cloud. It's not going to be enough to pop diamond proxies. Man Cloud's the man that's running right now. We do see once again piercing arrow spam from Genja. He flashes for the lost auto attack kill. Vulcan are four members down. Bloodwater has to defend against five. Ladies and gentlemen, Gambit are going to win. This is going to be the end game push here. Gambit with an impressive comeback victory. Very well played team fight, good coordination, good control, and Gambit's chances at the quarterfinals stay alive.